Welcome to Introduction to Computer Science, Information Systems. This is Lecture A. The component, Introduction to Computer Science, provides a basic overview of computer architecture, data organization, representation and structure, structure of programming languages, networking and data communication. It also includes the basic terminology of computing. The learning objectives for this unit, Information Systems, are to define an information system, how one is used, and list examples. Describe the components of an information system. Describe the process for developing an information system. Describe specialized information systems. And explain how information systems are used in healthcare. This lecture focuses on specialized information systems and use of information systems in healthcare. Systems are groups where individual pieces work together as a whole to complete tasks. The individual pieces can be people, parts, components, pieces, units, or whatever makes up the collection or group. Some examples are, a biological system is a group of organs working together to provide life requirements such as circulation, respiration, digestion, and reproduction. A sociocultural system is a system within society and culture. Society is an association of people with the same interests, whereas culture is the knowledge and values shared by that society. A sociocultural system is, then, a group of people with similar interests, knowledge, and values. Computer systems combine the computer, software, and peripheral devices necessary to make the computer function. A workstation is an example of a computer system. Business systems provide goods and services. A business system consists of people and or machinery, processes and or procedures that allow the completion of work to make the business function successfully. An accounting system is an example of a business system. An information system, or IS, is a collection of people, processes, procedures, hardware, software, and data, all working together to support decision-making, management, and operational activities. The system works together to generate information needed by the organization. It supports day-to-day -day information needs and long-term planning. It can be used by employees, business partners, clients, and customers of the organization. Data can be entered into the system manually by users, or pulled in electronically from another system or device. An example would be entering a new patient record into a clinic's information system. After the data is entered, it is processed according to the instructions given to the systems. For example, in a clinic's billing system, data about a patient's office visit would be processed into an invoice. The output of an information system is the result of the data processing. For the billing example, output would include the printed bill that is sent to the patient and or the insurance company. Other possible output from an information system includes reports, summaries, and other documents. Feedback potentially exists between all three tasks. For example, outputted reports can identify errors from data inputs. Such feedback may be used to improve the data entry process in the future. For this discussion, we define data as raw values that are collected for some purpose. For example, a payroll system would collect the number of hours that employees work in a pay period. A healthcare clinic would record the weight and medical record number of a patient. Data can be represented in multiple ways, depending on the context. It can be stored as alphanumeric characters, numbers, images, video, or audio, to name a few representations. Information is data that is organized in a structured way. Frequently, the intent is to demonstrate relationships between different components of the data. For example, an electronic medical record system may generate a graph of a patient's weight over time. Body mass index, or BMI, would also be considered information. It is an index calculated from weight and height data. Knowledge is the understanding of relationships between different data components. For example, classification of a given patient as being overweight, normal weight, or underweight is knowledge determined by the BMI and derived from the weight and height data. Not all information is useful, however. Here are some characteristics of useful information. First of all, information has to be accessible. It must be available at the right time and in the right format. For example, a system that supports e-prescribing must be able to display medication information, dosages, and possible interactions between different medications in about the same amount of time it would take to write the prescription by hand and look up the medication in a pocket reference guide. Information must be accurate. If it contains errors, it is not usable. Information should be as complete as possible. If important data is missing, the information may not be useful. For example, having an incomplete patient history can result in improper care. The information must be relevant to the task at hand. 
a clinician probably does not need reports about billing information while he or she is treating a patient, but might need information about medication dosing. Useful information must be reliable. Reliability of information depends on the data accuracy and on the methods used to discover the relationships between data components. Information must be timely, with the capacity to be generated when it is needed. And finally, information must be verifiable. Information systems provide access to information and knowledge, which allows for planning and decision-making. From a small business to a large institution, information is key for successful operations. A business process describes a specific set of transactions, events, tasks, and results. Managing and improving processes is the key to success in many fields, including healthcare. Communication improvements are directed toward two critical goals. One, information systems need to provide effective and efficient communication interfaces to users to enhance teamwork and provide coordination of activities. And two, information systems must interface effectively and efficiently with other information systems, both inside and outside the institution. While information systems are usually computer-based, it is possible to implement one without using a computer. For example, Many medical offices have used paper-based information systems for patient health records for years, even if their scheduling and billing systems were electronic. The concepts defined for an electronic information system can also be applied to manual or paper-based systems. As long as the system has well-defined processes and procedures, data collection, and people who use it, then it is still an information system. Because it is not electronic, the users themselves must process and analyze the information. Of course, computer-based information systems are very popular and are the focus of this unit. With today's technologies, information systems can quickly and efficiently gather, analyze, and report data and information. Users still provide expertise when operating the system, but the computer can automate routine calculations and analysis. The remainder of this unit will focus on computer-based information systems. There are several different types of information systems used in businesses today. At the lowest level, a transaction processing system records and automates basic business transactions. These can be payroll payments, payments to suppliers, or sales to customers. Built on top of that system is what is called a Management Information System, or MIS. This system uses the data collected by the transaction processing system to provide reports for managers. These reports can be used to track inventory, expenditures, and payroll costs, for example. Decision support systems use data from transaction processing and management information systems to support business decision-making. Decision support systems are usually interactive and provide support for decision-making at all levels of the business, from daily operational decisions to more long-term strategic planning. Finally, enterprise resource planning systems, or ERPs, involve data and support for the enterprise as a whole, involving all related business sites. They encompass all systems used by the business, manufacturing systems, production systems, human resource systems, transaction processing systems, sales systems, financial systems, and customer relationship management systems. ERP systems provide support for making decisions about the business as a whole and how it relates to its partners. This slide shows an example of an ERP system, OpenERP, a free, open source system, and some of the interfaces used in the application. Note that there are icons representing all parts of a business process, sales, purchases, warehouse, manufacturing, accounting, and human resources. Healthcare information systems are just another application of general information systems. Because hospitals and clinics are businesses, you will also find examples of traditional business information systems in healthcare settings. In addition to business systems, there are dozens of other types of information systems. Only a few of them are listed here. A more in-depth discussion of information systems in healthcare is provided in a later lecture. Laboratory information systems record, analyze, and communicate data related to laboratory testing, such as urinalysis or blood draws. Imaging information systems manage image data, such as those from X-rays or magnetic resonance images, or MRIs. Scheduling systems provide support for scheduling patient appointments, doctors' and nurses' shifts, and resources such as operating rooms or equipment. Clinical decision support systems are an example of decision support in medicine. These systems use knowledge to help with tasks that include diagnosing patients and selecting treatments. Finally, electronic health records, or EHRs, are information systems which document patient data, 
and interface with other systems to provide or retrieve information relevant to the patient, such as lab results or scheduling. Each of these information systems interfaces with others within the same healthcare setting to coordinate business and healthcare operations. The systems may also interface with systems outside the institution, such as external healthcare clinics or laboratories. Computer-based information systems are complex and include components that span the breadth of computer technology. Hardware includes the physical pieces of the system, servers, desktop computers, laptops, printers, scanners, monitors, barcode readers, and so on. Software includes everything from operating systems to application software. Software technologies can be developed in-house, purchased, or purchased and customized. These programs work with a database and hardware to perform all of the tasks required by the system. For example, electronic health record software allows clinicians to view and update a patient's record. Databases are collections of organized data. They store data based on relationships, which makes it easier to retrieve the data. Networks connect hardware components, allowing software and databases to connect and work together. Processes are the procedures used for accomplishing tasks. The information system will automate and or aid processes necessary for the effective use of the system. Finally, people are an important part of information systems. They design, implement, use, and maintain the systems over time. Processes are the procedures for accomplishing tasks in a system. Identifying and describing all the processes of a system provides a complete view of what the system does. Processes are usually composed of several steps and involve multiple people and components of the system. A process usually starts with an input, then performs some activities or calculations, and then produces an output. It is intended to be a comprehensive view of a task within an institution, taking into consideration the effect of the task throughout the institution and how it is affected by external forces. Workflows are more general views of processes. They provide a big picture of how processes are connected together. Representation of the processes can be done in a variety of ways. There are different modeling techniques, which include use cases and activity diagrams. Use cases are a graphical way of representing how users, called actors, interact with a system to achieve a goal. The use case diagram shown on this slide demonstrates how users interact with a restaurant to accomplish tasks. The actors are the restaurant patron, identified as the client, the waiter, the cashier, and the chef. Each actor interacts with a system in its own way. A waiter receives the food order and serves the food. The chef cooks the food. A client orders food, consumes it, and pays for it. A cashier accepts payment. The use case diagram shows how the process can be extended to include wine along with the food. Stakeholders are the people who have an interest in an information system, whether the system is existing or proposed. Stakeholders include technical and non-technical workers. Each stakeholder group has a different perspective of the same information system. The success of a project is in direct proportion to the active participation of the different stakeholders. System owners are high-level executives or managers who are interested in information that adds new business knowledge. Their primary role in a systems development project should be to define the scope and vision for the project. As the project sponsor, they need to supply clear requirements and expected project outcomes to the development team. They will approve the formal requirements and determine acceptance of the system. A system user is anyone or anything that uses the system, such as a receiving clerk, a nurse or doctor, a customer or client, or another system. System users are knowledgeable about the data that describe the business. As information workers, they capture, store, process, edit, and use data every day. System designers have information technology backgrounds that they use to create detailed technical outlines or templates used to build the system. System builders are the computer programmers and administrators who develop the system and the databases. They implement the designs for software and databases, as well as install and connect the hardware components of the system. Systems owners are the owners of, or principal entities responsible for, the primary business functions served by the system. A system owner is the individual, organization, or enterprise that is legally and administratively responsible and accountable for the system, its development, operation, products, byproducts, outcomes, and disposal. Owners usually represent upper management, and they define the project vision and expectations in terms of their insight into the problems, opportunities, and constraints of the business entities and roles. 
For example, the federal government can be considered a systems owner of the systems developed as part of the Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health Act, or high tech The chief information officer, or CIO, of a hospital would be considered the owner of the hospital's information systems. There are two types of system users, internal and external. Internal system users are the clerical and service workers, technical and professional staff, supervisors, middle managers, and executive managers within the organization. External system users are vendors, customers, suppliers, partners, and employees. System users may interact with the system on a daily basis. They are concerned with the system functionality as it relates to their own job and expect the system to support what they do easily and accurately. Anyone who will be accessing the new health information systems is considered a system user. Technical and software support people, trainers, and implementation support specialists will also be system users as they help doctors, nurses, and staff learn and use computer applications. Internal system users in medical informatics include the clinicians and practitioner consultants. External system users include patients and medical supply representatives. System designers are those who develop the detailed plan for the system. These detailed plans are called specifications. They provide all the details needed for implementation. A software designer and developer translates the requirements of the system into specifications. These specifications cover all aspects of the system software, database, hardware, networks, user interfaces, and security. The systems analyst must work with other experts, including database administrators, network architects, web architects, graphic artists, and security experts, to provide very detailed specifications of all elements of the system. Programmers are the core system builders and possess technical backgrounds in computer languages. Applications programmers write the code behind the applications. As mentioned earlier, an application is a computer or software program designed to help the user perform specific, singular, or multiple related tasks. Systems programmers write the code to manage and integrate a computer's capabilities. These programs are not part of the application, but instead support the application. Database programmers write in special languages, such as Structured Query Language, or SQL, or MUMPS, a database language developed for healthcare applications. System administrators are responsible for the maintenance of the hardware and software of a network, which includes deploying, configuring, maintaining, and monitoring active network equipment. System administration also involves system security, which is crucial for protection of information and property from theft or corruption. Sensitive and valuable information must be kept secure and unwanted computer behavior prevented. Webmasters make sure servers operate properly. They also design websites, generate and revise web pages, reply to user comments, and examine traffic through a website. Webmasters are well versed in web transaction software, payment processing software, and security software. Systems integrators make sure that all the systems are seamlessly integrated and work together. This includes integrating new systems with old ones and connecting subsystems, even those that have been purchased from different vendors. Project managers are responsible for planning, execution, and completion of projects. They are responsible for developing clear and attainable project objectives, building the project requirements, and managing the cost, time, and quality of the project. Project managers should have the full responsibility and authority necessary to complete a project. Information systems project managers should have business expertise and technology experience. They manage the project, but seldom participate directly in the activities that produce the end result. A project manager must have the skills to maintain the progress, cooperation, and work of developers and stakeholders in such a way that reduces the risk of overall failure, maximizes benefits, and restricts cost. This concludes Lecture A of Information Systems. Information systems are a combination of technology, people, and processes working together to produce and use information. Information systems provide access to information which, in turn, helps improve processes and aids in decision-making. They also provide a way for people to communicate and collaborate. There are many different types of information systems used in businesses and institutions, including transaction processing systems and management information systems. Information system components include hardware, software, databases, networks, processes, and people. The stakeholders of information systems include system owners, users, designers, builders, and analysts.